meaning that there will be uh, to open up the consulate mm. that we'll have to see what the situation is like in terms of public health and getting people together in, in a waiting room. Yeah, but if people uh, want to get uh, treated, uh, they have medical reasons, if you have students, right. well, what can they do? For emergencies, we, we, people should contact the consulate. Mm. Um, for, uh, for every other category, we just have to wait and see. Egypt and the U.S. have had a long-standing uh, strategic relationship uh, going back to uh, for decades uh, now in all fields, uh, military, uh, economic, uh, uh, political. Um, um, and we are witnessing under the current uh, U.S. Administ administration maybe one of the best times of that uh, relation. What, why do you think that? Why, what are the pillars of that uh, close ties, of these close ties? Well, you've hit on a number of them. Uh, the, I think the, the main reason we have such close ties is because our, our national interests are aligned. And they line up through the categories of military security, economics and trade, uh, politics and regional issues, people-to-people -people exchanges and culture. And I can talk a little bit about each of those. Um, my ambition during my time here as ambassador is to further deepen and strengthen that partnership. Uh, to work for an Egypt that is strong, secure, and prosperous, because mm. that's in America's interest. How can the U.S. help Egypt becoming uh, a regional uh, hub for gas? Well, partly it's through investment, and the largest investor, American investor in Egypt is an, is an energy company, an oil and gas company, and a number of the American major oil and gas companies have been in Egypt for many, many years. Yeah. So we're encouraging them to continue doing their work, um, both upstream and downstream. Uh, Noble Energy uh, and the, the gas pipeline I already discussed. Uh, and we are uh, actively involved in the diplomacy of, of helping Egypt become a regional energy hub, uh, as I mentioned, as you mentioned, through being an observer in the, uh, in the Eastern Mediterranean Gas Forum. Um, but if, if you went to the, uh, the Egypt Petroleum Show back in January, uh, the number of American companies, big ones, small ones, medium-sized ones, that were there wanting to get a piece of, of the market here yeah. was overwhelming. And I think that speaks very um, well and promisingly of Egypt's potential. Military assistance, which is also a pillar of the relation between Egypt and the U.S. And uh, Egypt has received around, what, $50 billion of assistance since the peace treaty? Yes. 50, it's about $50 billion of U.S. investment in Egypt's military uh, mm. over these 40 years. And that is both in hardware and in training. Um, right now, uh, and, and it's, it's led to Egypt having um, a very large F-16 fleet. Mm. There are over 200 F-16 fighter jets, um, over 1,000 M1A1 main battle tanks. Uh, the um, ships that patrol the Mediterranean coast and the Red Sea coast, um, a number of them were donated by the United States. The air defense system that protects Cairo and the Suez Canal uh, was from the US. And uh, we're continuing to work, as I mentioned, on counterterrorism and border security. Uh, two of our ongoing projects are providing uh, border sensors along the western and southern borders uh, so that Egypt can detect when any unauthorized aircraft, vehicle, pedestrian, or tunnel is, uh, crosses the frontier. And we have uh, provided about 1,400 mine-resistant ambush vehicles, which are they're the armored vehicles that our soldiers use in Afghanistan and in Iraq. And uh, that's meant to protect the Egyptian soldiers from IEDs, roadside bombs. What's in the pipeline still in the 2020 fiscal year? Pipeline in 2020, is, it's hard to talk about because the fiscal years end up, hmm. the, the 2020 money isn't being no. expended yet. The 2019 money is, uh, is being used for um, some of the things that I've discussed. Uh, a few things also on, on uh, coming are upgrades of the F-16 fleet and, uh, and of Apache helicopters um, and continuing work on the border sensors and the border security piece. The military assistance has stayed pretty consistent at around $1.3 billion a year um, over the, the time period in question. And I think that is, while it's always hard to predict because ultimately the number gets decided by Congress in consultation with the administration. Uh, I expect that number will stay uh, about the same going forward mm. uh, for the military, for the, the military assistance. 
Um, an important part of the military assistance that I didn't address is training. And yeah. we've trained uh, about over 15,000 Egyptian military personnel, including uh, several hundred a year who go to the United States. And uh, of those, some go to our premier military academies. So there is a, a long, uh, deep tradition of our militaries working together and knowing each other well. Um, I, you mentioned uh, USAID, which is the non-military side of the yeah. assistance. And while we've invested about $50 billion in Egypt's military, we've also invested about $30 billion in Egypt's development. And that has been both preserving the past and helping Egypt to build for a better future. Uh, people may not know, but uh, USAID money, which means US taxpayer money, went to preserve a number of important cultural um, sites in Egypt, including the Sphinx, which was being mm. damaged by groundwater, uh, including the temple at Komombo near Aswan and the catacombs in Alexandria. In addition to the historical preservation work, we've done about uh, $3.5 billion worth of work in water and sanitation. The sewer system in Alexandria was built by American tax money. Wastewater treatment plants in Cairo also were built by USAID. And uh, we've just finished a desalination plant in North Sinai that will provide water for agriculture and aquaculture to help people with their livelihoods up there. The United States wants Egypt to have the best military equipment that it can get. And we think the best military equipment comes from the United States. Um, when I talk to, and, and when we're talking about fighter jets in particular, when I talk to fighter pilots, to American fighter pilots who've flown the, the jets and seen their competition in action, they are absolutely convinced that the Russian jets are not as good as the American jets. So I, I would say buy American because they're better, first of all. Uh, but second of all, we want Egypt's uh, defense capability to be interoperable with us and with our other allies. And Russian equipment just is not, um, especially not something advanced like a fighter jet. Plus, in, nine, in 2017, the US Congress passed legislation that requires sanctions for anyone conducting a major purchase of Russian military equipment. And that's not targeted at our partners. It's targeted to prevent the Russian leadership from profiting after their activity in Ukraine. Uh, so for all of these reasons, we, are, we would be concerned if, uh, if Egypt moved forward with major Russian military purchases. And, and I, I should point to the example of Turkey, hmm. um, which moved forward with the acquisition of an S-400 air defense system. And because of that, we were forced to drop them out of the F-35 Joint Strike Fighter program. Yes, but they were not just, sanctioned. That just, Turkey, Turkey was but, not but that just shows that, that mm. just shows how strong even the administration feels about this, not just the Congress. Yes, but, but Egypt needs to diversify. Uh, so please, diversify with interoperable platforms. You know, there, there are lots of, um, of platforms out there that can, inter that can operate seamlessly with the 200 F F-16s you have. Um, that's, that's our, we constantly look at our numbers, but the, the peacekeeping force in Sinai is, as you said, a very important legacy of the peace treaty between Egypt and Israel. And the United <laughs> States leadership in that force remains something to which we're committed. My predecessor in this job went on to be the director general of, of the force and is in that job now. Um, one of my very first visits in this job was to the change of command. Uh, for the, the multinational force observers in Sharm el-Sheikh. And I visited their forward operating base in North Sinai as well. Uh, we remain committed to the operation of that force as an effective peacekeeper. So you're not pulling out of the, peace, uh, of the peacekeeping force? You're not pulling out American troops? As I said, we, we're constantly looking at the numbers. Um, but right now, no decision has been made to pull out of peacekeeping. And we are, uh, of course, aware the, mm. uh, of the, the struggle that Egypt is, uh, is facing with terrorism in the Sinai. Um, and let me take this moment to, again, express our condolences to the families of the soldiers who've been killed in that effort. You know, one of the things, as I mentioned, we, we are, we've funded a desalination plant in North Sinai, uh, and we are funding other projects to help with livelihood, to help people um, earn salary there, with the idea that if people have a, um, a way to earn a livelihood, they'll be less tempted to take money from a terrorist organization mm. that wants to pay them to plant a roadside bomb. So we're, we're in this as well and trying to help Egypt to, um, to address its problem there.